Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. Today uh, we are starting a new lecture. In this lecture, we will try to understand the auxiliary controls. The auxiliary controls mean all the uh, motions of a machine that facilitate our primary motions. Uh, these include secondary motions and tertiary motions. Uh, we will uh, primary, primarily focus on uh, web web detectors, uh, the web brickets, and how we can uh, how a machine can detect the web brickets. Uh, warp brickets and then we will see the different type of uh, salvage controls and uh, uh, we will also see the warp tension and uh, warp breakage control how we control them on the machine so let's see it then dear students uh, on this slide uh, you can see the summary of different type of auxiliary motions that we will we want to talk about in the, this lecture uh, you can see the first of all we will talk about the web detectors uh, what type of different web detectors are available on especially air jet fueling machines and how they work work uh, then we will talk about the different type of salvage controls uh, we will see what is the dummy salvage and then we will see the uh, we will talk about individual type of uh, salvage uh, forming devices for example lunar salvage tracking salvage and how the different type of yarn pickles works and, and when we are finished with this, uh, we will talk about the different type of warp breakage detectors and we will see how the web tension is controlled on the machine and the different type of uh, new innovation that are being used for uh, controlling the warp tension in the machine. Dear students, uh, we have uh, uh, web detectors available on uh, all type of weaving uh, uh, machines, uh, especially when we talk about the air jet weaving machine. We uh, we we used to uh, feel the presence of uh, web that is being inserted. Uh, we want to see if the uh, web that is being did uh, that is being inserted is perfectly inserted or not. For this, we use uh, the uh, web detectors. We can, we can name them web detectors or web feelers (FD) or filling detectors (FD) or uh, web detectors (WF). Like over here, you see WF and some of the manufacturer call them filling detectors fd so web detectors are the devices uh, that are used to uh, confirm the uh, proper insertion of the web uh, on the weaving machine uh, for the special case of uh, air jet weaving machine we have two type of web detectors um, uh, the one detector is used to assure if the uh, at the given time a web is have a uh, web has arrived on the uh, on the rightmost position on the rightmost position you can see on this figure that uh, here is the last uh, web uh, uh, sub nozzles uh, air jet web is the insertion system in the last sub nozzle so beyond this nozzle the fabric will finish and you can see the here is the blue one is the web detector that is that will confirm that will confirm the presence of the uh, web uh, after the completion uh, web to insertion is completed. Uh, you can see a stretch nozzle available over here that will keep the yarn stretched so that it can be detected from the be from the web from the uh, web detector. But we will also have uh, another type of uh, web detector. This is called WF2 or FD2. Uh, one of the feed web protector detects the presence and other detect the absence for example there are the cases of, uh, with the air jet weaving that the web can go beyond certain uh, limits uh, this happens when there is uh, too much pressure and web breaks or when there is imperfect uh, web insertion the web and the wf2 can also detect the web but when the when it detects the presence of web uh, it stops the machine WF1 when, uh, when detect uh, the presence of the yarn does not stop but it only stops the machine when there is no web but WF2 detects if it detects the yarn uh, it stops the machine it must not stop must not detect the yarn the, the yarn must not be present over here uh, to machine to be working if there is an abnormal web insertion this abnormal web will reach to the WF2 WF2 will detect and stops the machine. So these two web detectors work together for the proper insertion of the web. 
and continue and works at the finishing work in each left insertion keep on working the proper working of the machine the rough detecting uh, the rough detectors are uh, working for the for to detect the presence or absence of the rabbit yarn uh, you can see over here uh, these are the uh, light emitters which generally emits the uh, infrared light and we have a receiver over here uh, this is one type of configuration available for the rough detector you can see the the yarn that will be present over here the, uh, the emitter will emit light and this light will be reflected from the yarn and will be received from the uh, with the with the receivers the optical sensors the optical light light sensors and detects the presence of yarn presence of uh, light because of the reflection from the yarn it will uh, judge the presence of yarn as a principle may be uh, the um, the emitter is constantly emitting the light for example from top to bottom and if the bottom yarn feels the interruption of the light uh, it, it uh, sends the presence of the yarn so the rough detector uh, can can feel the yarn by the reflection or maybe by the hindrance of the light so these two direct, uh, type of uh, possibilities would be there for our protector to work. Uh, on this slide, uh, I want to again uh, mention in, in, in more detail. Uh, on the right, you can see there can be uh, there can be two type of uh, rough detector. Uh, one is is shown uh, over here that uh, that that sends the uh, presence of yarn when the light is interrupt interrupted you can see over here uh, this type of uh, rough detector exactly fit in along the way of the uh, yarn's movement and you have to cut the reed to install such type of rough detectors generally they are used uh, in the in those cases where we have very exact measurement of the reed and we, for the installation we have to cut the reed and install this in this in the way of the yarn and the other type of uh, rough detectors are the detectors that are installed in front of the reed so these these are called next to the reed and these these detectors are called next to the reed the next to the reed detectors works on the principle that uh, they they feel the presence of the yarn on the reflection from the yarn from the yarn the light is reflected and sensed by the sensors like this in this principle so such type of uh, sensors does not require to cut the reed so they are more popular in our um, weaving units so these both type of uh, sensors use such type of uh, infrared infrared light and such some some kind of uh, uh, optical sensor that sends the light and they work together in this way so here the principle and two type of rough detectors are shown on this slide so this is the this is uh, all about rough detectors now we'll talk about for the other other parts so on this slide i want to mention uh, how the catch card uh, works uh, how the what are the catch cards Catch cords basically are the dummy salvage or the false salvage that we make out of the fabric. You can see on the on the right image, right video, you can see the fabric is finishing over here. The reed is finishing over here. But you can see there are some threads that are out of our fabric. We used to make this, uh, this false salvage or dummy salvage uh, or catch cords we want to grip the weft yarn that is being inserted out of the fabric so that we can properly cut it and make a salvage properly you can see over here the tuck-in device uh, the tuck-in device is uh, making the salvage over here but some of the yarns are outside of the fabric that are uh, the catch cord so catch cord are some of the yarns that we uh, have for warp yarns uh, these yarns may not be coming from the 
these yarns are uh, uh, may not be coming from the beam. beam. We may have some special type of uh, yarn packages that are releasing these yarns and uh, the purpose of them is only to hold the weft yarn so that they can cut from a proper position and they may be used for tucking or lino or other salvage devices uh, for uh, the control of the salvage and afterward these yarns uh, when the weft has been cut so it these yarn will collect on as a waste and uh, the, we will waste these yarns the cut it part of the weft as well as the these yarn bob yarn that are coming we will remove them and they will be producing the waste so the dummy salvage or catch card are the threads we use to grip the weft out of the fabric for the proper uh, manufacturing of the salvage so dear students uh, uh, Catch cord is, uh, is a type of waste that we produce from our weaving machine. So there is an option that uh, is available uh, with different manufacturers. For example, I have seen gone through the Picanol, and they are offering uh, a catch cord system that is uh, yarnless. That that do not require a catch cord. Without the catch cord, they can uh, they are providing a, a function on the machine. Uh, it uses the pneumatic or air compressed air to hold the yarns, uh, rather controlling the uh, gripping the weft with the, with the help of warp yarns. Uh, a pneumatic system is available on the machine and that can temporary, temporarily uh, holds the weft at their position, cut them, and then the uh, and, and the the need of catch cord uh, will not be there. So let's see them. Dear students, uh, here uh, is the tutorial view of this uh, uh, cordless uh, uh, working of uh, uh, pneumatic control of gripping the weft for the cutting without the cords, without the catch cords. You can see over here are different components of this system. Uh, here is the uh, filling detector number one, FT1, uh, first det uh, weft detector. Uh, here is the channel of the reed and uh, yarn is coming from here uh, what happened is uh, the yarn coming from here is detected by the ft1 and uh, here the c is the ring jet this this basically is the, the pneumatic pressure available over here and the uh, we have a small guide of uh, channel small channel that fits in the in the reed channel that this is called g uh, it is named as guide filling guide this filling guide come in the yarn spot and uh, let this uh, let our yarn be sucked uh, in C that is the ring jet the ring jet sucks the yarn and holds it here instead of uh, uh, the catch cord this ring jet is working and holding the yarn wrapped yarn uh, for its uh, confirmed gripping we have a, a e device over here this e device is a catcher device this catcher device grips the yarn mechanically. So uh, once the uh, once the reed is coming for the beat up, and before the beat up, when the FD1 works, the system engages the yarn, uh, suck uh, suck the yarn or uh, or catches the yarn by pneumatic pressure in this ring jet, and mechanically hold the yarn uh, in this catcher E. Next, what is the when reed is approaches for the beat up at the zero degree most forward position? So when reed comes in for most forward direction, uh, uh, most forward position at the zero degree, uh, the the e uh, catcher that is holding the weft yarn. Uh, now uh, there is a new suction device over here and, and, and another suction device over here. This is, this is called suction mouth that is G over here. Uh, this G uh, takes the yarn from this uh, uh, catcher E. Now G is holding the yarn and catcher releases it. Now when deed goes back, so uh, the the yarn is continuously being held by this G, the suction mouth. And uh, uh, during this suction, all the requirement of uh, yarn cutting and uh, 
uh, tucking or other other operation of the salvage are being done uh, once uh, the, this is complete the, the removed yarn the cutted yarn will be removed by this section air section and we will not need we will we do not we will not be needing any catch cords so only by suction we are and holding device mechanical holding devices now we are holding our weft and we do not require the catch cords in any case uh, if uh, the the weft is too long that is uh, fd1 is uh, that, that aft is very much long uh, we have the fd2 on the other side the yarn will go through this uh, ringer uh, jet and will uh, go uh, go in front of the fd2 and machine will stop uh, like regular stops uh, for uh, improper weft insertion for fd2 stops machine will be working uh, like the like it is normally but for normal picking what i told you will happen in this in these steps so in these two slides i have mentioned you the uh, cord uh, how we can use uh, pneumatic pressure uh, in place of the catch cords that is cordless uh, weaving so this saves us the warp yarn that are come continuously coming as a catch cords and we waste them now we can prevent them by using this uh, type of system dear students now let's uh, talk about uh, the lino salvage devices uh, before talking about the devices uh, let's see the lino salvage uh, one type of salvage that is possible on um, uh, shuttleless machines are is called lino salvage uh, linear salvage basically looks like uh, uh, the, on the edge of the fabric you will find a fray, small fray, small fringe of the uh, loose uh, weft yarns. Uh, the, the salvage is strong enough to hold the body warp yarns uh, in its place because of we are using uh, at the before this, this fray the last yarn we will use a a special type of uh, uh, pair of uh, warp yarn these warp yarn are uh, twisted uh, among each other twisting along each other and between them we insert the weft so it produce a uh, such a, a kind of locking system and this locking system holds the uh, holds the edge of the fabric firmly together and uh, it, it, uh, it is not easy to shift them, move them and we have a sufficiently long fray on the other side so that's uh, in this way we make a uh, special type of uh, salvage of the fabric we call it lino salvage now uh, this lino can be of two types, let's see them now the lino, uh, basically lino weaving Lino salvage is from lino weaving. Lino weaving basically is the uh, is a technique in which not only the interlacement uh, like regular weaving happens, but also we turn the uh, pair of uh, warp yarns together. Uh, we twist them, and uh, this pair uh, can have a twist, a uh, full twist or a half twist. Uh, for example, I will just come to this picture in a moment. Half twist mean that only one yarn fall on the both sides turn by turn, and uh, it uh, during this for uh, this, this turning we insert the weft. For example, this is the half lino. You can see this black thread is always and the white is the weft, and black is the uh, one. Uh, one warp yarn of the lino and the gray is the other warp yarn of the lino and you can see that this black yarn is always up on the weft and gray yarn is always down on the weft and this type of lino is one yarn always is down to the weft means it is falling on left or right to the black yarn and weft is always going upward to this gray yarn and always down to this black yarn so in in this in in a respect one yard is falling to the other in right or left and from which the weft is passing through uh, 
uh, to understand this if you imagine if we if we remove this white yarn slide them away you can see that the, there will be no twist the black yarn and gray yarn will be separated from each other there will be no interaction between them if we remove this white yarn so in half twisted lino one yarn turns in both direction while the other yarn of the twist uh, lino, lino pair yarn will remain straight and uh, during this fall we insert the weft and the locking is done uh, for 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 a half twisted lino we require special type of uh, arrangement special type of uh, uh, lino handles uh, in, in this lino handle we will see the one yarn falls one direction or in another direction for the full twisted lino you can see over here for example this green yarn is not only from here it is passing uh, this uh, off white yarn is weft yarn so green yarn is uh, uh, is sometime down sometime up similarly this magenta yarn sometime down sometime up so both yarn is twisting this green and magenta twist uh, lino yarns are turning around each other in full uh, twist there is no half twist full twisting and you can imagine if we remove this weft yarn from slide them away there will always be a twist even though we remove this weft yarn between these lino yarns this is that is why these are called full twisted lino for full twisted lino we require special type of uh, operators that actually turns the two threads uh, to each other so we'll see devices in next slide so basically lino salvage is from lino weaving and there are two possibilities half twisted lino and full twisted lino half twisted lino can be a problem if the weft yarn is removed the twist will be gone but for full twisted lino it has more grip and even if the yarn is removed from uh, weft yarn is removed we can see that the the twist will be there uh, between the two lino, lino yarns Dear students, uh, here is the more explanation. Uh, these are the devices, uh, special type of lino handles that are installed in the uh, handle frames. Uh, one uh, in in one frame, another in another one, another, another frame. Two frames required for uh, engaging these uh, lino devices. And uh, between these two lino uh, handles, there is a rider. You can see a rider over here. This rider will always go along with the uh, handle that goes upward and uh, it has an eye from which we pass uh, this red yarn. You see the red yarn will always be up and green yarn will be uh, will go right and left always in the make the bottom shirt line. Uh, here you can see this uh, little uh, a little contrast is there but but you can see that uh, this this one yarn that remains straight the other yarn is turning on the left or the right left or the right and you can see that the this orange yarn is always uh, going up to this uh, pink yarn and down to this green yarn so that is how i was telling you that the half lino device the yarn turns now it falls on one direction or another direction to the to this uh, uh, central d titan yarn of lino yarn so that's how if we remove this weft you can see that there is no interaction between this green and this uh, uh, magenta yarn so this is how this is the working of half lino this is the arduino device this is the animation how it works and this is the explanation how the yarn turns halfway on the, in the both direction right and left uh, to the one yarn lava lino yarn that is uh, remain tight uh, on this slide you can see the uh, full lino device uh, basically how the full lino device is you can see in this image uh, there is a this is the driving shaft driving gear and this driving gear is engaging to the lino salvage gear this lino salvage gear we have a, a fixed stationary gear over here the stationary gear transmit the motion um, because of stationary and this disc is moving 
and the disk disk is mounted with these uh, these planetary gears on these planetary gears we are we have installed these uh, bobbins these bobbins are holding the yarns on it so uh, the principle is because of this fixed gear the planetary gear, uh, gear always revolve in the reverse direction in the opposite direction to the to this lino selvit gear you can see over here the here is the drive and here is this uh, lino selvit gear this uh, black one and, and and the direction is opposite to the if this is the uh, anti clockwise direction uh, here you can see that the 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 direction is in such a way that these planetary gears are always making a such type of uh, a motion that the the yarn that has been released from these two yarns are turning in on in one direction they are turning in one direction and making a twist between these two yarns so this is how uh, the lino device work and full twist is uh, obtained by these devices